Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss what's called a carbohydrate fermentation test. Now, here's some images of the actual results of a carbohydrate fermentation test. I'll explain what the test does in a minute, but let's actually look at this uh, setup because it actually looks a little bit different. What you'll see here is actually inside a larger test tube, it appears we have an inverted smaller test tube that's sitting inside the broth. And that's exactly what it is. So in a carbohydrate fermentation test, which is actually sometimes called just the Durham tube test, um, we have here a large test tube, okay? It clearly has some broth in it. We'll discuss that in a minute. And then I have what looks like, and it kind of is, it's called a Durham tube, but it's a smaller test tube, much thinner and it's shorter, and it's actually inverted. So actually you turn it upside down and just stick it into the broth. So the opening of the Durham tube is actually down here on the bottom. So right down here where my mouse is, that's the opening. And so that allows the broth to go up into the Durham tube, okay? And that's the setup. All right, so in the broth, there's one sugar. And we can use any sugar, but it's just one at a time. Um, here's some listed that we can use. We can use glucose, lactose, sucrose, mannose, glycerol. There's others we can use, any that you can think of. Now, glycerol is not technically a sugar. It's not a carbohydrate, but... It's actually linked with glycolysis, and it turns out you can actually do this test with glycerol. Um, it can actually be useful in some cases. But there's one of those molecules inside uh, this broth. All right? Now, as the name suggests, carbohydrate fermentation tests determine whether or not a bacteria is able to ferment one of these sugars. So, for example, if we put mannose in here, then that test would determine whether or not that bacteria could ferment mannose. If we put lactose in here, it would determine whether or not those bacteria can ferment lactose. Okay, So it's just one at a time. And remember what fermentation is, generally speaking. It's a metabolic process that consumes sugar and generates energy. The process normally does not require oxygen, so it's considered anaerobic. Um, and it normally is going to release a lot of heat. Okay. And in some cases, this is important to realize, it can actually release gases. Okay, That's going to be important in one of the results here, actually the middle one. So now let's actually go into interpreting the results. So hopefully you understand what's in here. All right, so let's take for an example, let's use a mannose as an example. Let's say that this broth contains mannose. All right, so we have mannose in here and we inoculate it using a simple broth inoculation. We incubate it, and it turns all yellow like this on the, on the left. Okay, um, That's going to indicate a positive result. Now, unlike most tests, we don't just put a positive sign. Okay, The correct way to actually indicate that this is a positive result is to put an A. Now, why is that? Inside the broth, there's also a pH indicator. Most of the time, it's phenol red. Okay, um, When phenol red... Um, becomes acidic, when it becomes acidic, um, the pH gets lowered and the pH indicator turns yellow. Okay, um, Really what uh, the bacteria are doing is they're converting these sugars into more acid end products, such as lactic acid. Very similar to what we saw in the McConkie agar, which I showed you in the previous video. And so when the pH goes down during the fermentation, it turns the pH indicator yellow. So a yellow result means it's positive, okay? And if it's all yellow like this, we put A for acidic, okay? The A stands for acidic, but that's the case when it turns yellow, all right? Now notice here, this is important, not only is the broth down here yellow in the base, but also going up the Durham tube, right up to the very tip of the Durham tube right here, it's all yellow. When you have that, yes, it's a positive reaction, but it just gets the letter A, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now I'll go into the middle case right here. As I mentioned here in this bullet point, some bacteria with some sugars, they can both ferment the sugar into an acid end product, such as lactic acid, and they can produce gas at the same time. That's what concomitantly means. Okay, so um, in this case, notice at the top of the Durham tube, um, you see the liquid meniscus right here, but then there's a space here. Here's the top of the Durham tube where the tip of my mouse is. You see there's some space here where there's no fluid at all, no liquid. Okay, That space is filled with gas. Um, so this situation in the middle looks almost identical to here on the left, except for there's gas here. 
it's still all yellow, at least any place where the fluid is, it's all yellow. So it gets an A, but we have to put a G for gas, okay? And that just means that right up here at the top of the Durham tube, there's some gas, okay? That's the only place you'll ever see the gas. So just look here right in the top of the Durham tube. Um, sometimes you'll see A slash G like this. Sometimes you can see A comma G or just A G. Um, for the purpose of my class, I don't care how you put it as long as there's an A and a G, okay? But that's the case when you have, when you're positive for fermentation and you have gas. Again, we don't put a positive sign. We put A and G. That's just typically how we do it. All right, so what about a negative reaction? All right, now this indicates right here a control, so it's uninoculated, but generally uh, you'll have a result that looks very similar to this. Now, in this negative reaction right here, uh, it's all red, okay? The fluid in the broth is red, the fluid in the Durham tube is red. Anytime you have a situation where there's any red whatsoever, any red, in this case, it's all red, but any red, it's automatically negative. Now, for a negative reaction, we do indicate a negative sign. I don't have the negative sign here. I just got this image off of Google. But if, if you were to see this experimentally after inoculating, you would actually just write a negative sign. That's all you do. So your results are A, AG, and negative sign. Now, when I say any red means negative, you can sometimes have situations where the broth in here is red, but in the Durham tube, it's yellow. The yellow doesn't make it positive. The fact that there's red in the broth, any red whatsoever means it's automatically negative, okay? That's very important to understand. And even if the situation were flipped and it was uh, red in the tube, the Durham tube that is, and yellow in the base here of the main test tube, that would still be negative because there's red. So the point here is any red I don't care how much red, it's automatically negative. That's what we're gonna say. And so that being said, there's really three results you can have. Any red, any red whatsoever, it's automatically negative. Or if it's all yellow and no gas up here, it's just A. If you have it all yellow, but then there's a little space up here where there's gas in the tip of the Durham tube, it's AG, G for gas. Three results, okay, and again, in our example where this broth was filled with mannose, in this case over here on the left, we'd say, yes, that bacteria ferments mannose, A. In the middle here, yes, that bacteria ferments mannose, but it also produces gas in the process, A, G. Over here on the right, this bacteria does not ferment mannose at all, okay? That's the interpretation, and hopefully this test makes sense to you. It's pretty simple. Um, the only thing you really have to memorize in terms of the results is the A, the A, G, and negative. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.